All right, guys, how was exam? If I had another 15 minutes, I think I would have got them all right. Okay, but overall, pretty fair overall. All right, cool. Um, I, I haven't graded anything yet. I just very briefly looked at it. Uh, it looked like a mixed bag, so yeah, let, let's see. Mm. Depends on how the grades come back. <laughs> okay. There, there was a comment in the chat. All right. Um, okay. Um, well, I mean, after reviewing everything for the midterm, uh, I think all of the basic stuff you already have, um, there will nothing be, nothing else will be drastically new. So uh, things will be a, a bit easier. All right. Okay. So we started talking about suspended weights and what happens when they get shifted. For instance, if you have a crane on your ship, on your cargo ship, and you take on like a big cargo container from the dock and lift it up, and now you're placing it in your hold, what, what does this do to our stability? So as, in, as soon as you, well, immediately as you pick up the container, it's as if your crane, let me draw like a fake crane here. So let's call this our crane. So immediately as you pick up the container, it's as if you've suspended, you've put an extra weight at this point, the suspension point. The thing is down here, but the weight acts as if the center of gravity were at the suspension point. So two things happen. Um, the uh, first thing that happens is the overall center of gravity, meaning if our original hull had the CG at G0, now you've added another weight at this suspension point. So we expect the combined center of gravity to get pushed up. So the overall CG shifts upwards. Oh. Since Since the suspended weight Okay, and when this shift happens, we'll end up somewhere slightly higher. Let's call this G1. All right, so the question we think about is, um, how much is the shift? So we're mainly interested in what, what is the shift from G0 to G1. 
And by now you um, probably realize we need to know this because stability is G to M. And now we have decreased this G to M distance slightly by moving this up. So we will lose some stability. If we lose too much stability, uh, bad things happen. Okay. So let me just write out all these variables, G0. All right, so how do we compute this shift from G0 to G1? What would you do? Look at the data given. So we know center of gra gravity for the unloaded ship, G0. And we basically need to find what's the new combined center of gravity with unloaded ship and the suspended weight. What, how do we do this? I'm thinking that your uh, displacement is going to increase by some um, increase in the draft. And so if you multiply that by the area and take the uh, density of water, then uh, that would be the displacement would be equal to W ship plus W suspended, or the increase would be W suspended uh, divided by the area times the uh, um, density of the water, I'm thinking. So you're talking about when we uh, when we basically put on extra weight, the um, draft will increase. Um, that's correct, but we don't need to think about draft when talking about the center of gravity. Um, the center of gravity is not related to the floating characteristics directly. Can we do about, this yeah. equation where we do like the JG times the weight yeah. Um, plus kg times the weight. Exactly. So we we basically are combining two different masses. So we know how to com com uh, compute the combined center of mass. We will use that same exact equation. So we need to find kg one first. So let's say kg one is equal to. Mass one, distance one. So let's see, mass one, distance one was the unloaded ship. So mass one is W ship divided by G and distance one was KG zero. Okay. And then whatever additional uh, weight we have. So that's um, W. Times what? What is the um, distance for W suspended? Yeah. Should we take K little g zero or should we take K O? Hmm. 
this is the only um, thing we have to be careful about for suspended weights. Everything else we already have encountered before. So Maybe for KO or is that not right? Huh. Just yeah, that's that's the main thing that'll be different. So the weight acts as if it's acting at O. So we take KO, not KG zero. Okay. So we take KO. Divided by the both the masses, so W shape over G plus W suspended over G. So as soon as the crane picks up a weight, mm -hmm. the weight acts at point zero. Yeah, it acts at the cranes where wherever the um, cable is attached to the crane, the point of suspension. But now let's um, think a bit further and what will happen as soon as the, um, the container touches the hold? It'll act at that point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, immediately as the container touches the hold, all of the weight is being supported by the um, bottom surface. So the weight no longer acts at the suspension point, but at its center of gravity here. And uh, if you think about it, that's good for stability, right? We want to put heavy weights down below. So our G shifts downwards. Right now we are doing the opposite because the thing is hanging by a cable. The, it makes our G shift upwards. I'm having difficulty uh, trying to visualize that. What what would happen if the crane lifts up like half the weight, but it's still attached, it's still sitting on the surface of the deck? So you're saying if uh, the container touches the bottom, but there's still some tension in the cable? Yes. So if the there's partial tension in the cable, that tension still acts at O, but the other part, uh, will act at G zero. So you can have, wow, okay. So theoretically if the crane was really, really tall and you picked up a heavy, heavy container, you could lose stability without the container even leaving the deck. Yeah, so uh, as, as, as soon as the, um, you tension the cable uh, and the, the container won't get lifted up until this tension is greater than the weight of the container. So it's feasible that even before the container starts rising, you will uh, capsize. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, this, so this sort of design has to be done very, very carefully. So just remember that main point suspended weights, that, that happens. When you start tensioning the cable, you get a, sh a loss in stability. Anything else? All right, so this KO is, we can write this as KG0 plus G0O. And this is G0O is in our diagram given to us. It's given as H vertical. And this H vertical we would know because we know how tall we make our crane and we know our initial center of gravity. Okay, so let me cancel out all the G's. And then we have KG1.
once we have this, what we want is G1, uh, G0. Then this is KG1 minus KG0. You bring terms to that side and rearrange and you'll get, it ends up being H vertical And if, if you say the uh, meta center doesn't shift much, this would be your loss in metacentric height. Of course, if the weight suspended is huge, the meta center will shift slightly because the submerged volume will change slightly. But see here, uh, if you make, if you suspend a relatively small weight, but if you make the H vertical very large, you will get a huge loss in the metacentric height. Okay, so you, you should try to keep your crane short, as short as possible, but tall enough that it, you, you, it's functional. Okay, so that's the first thing that happens. We get a loss in the metacentric height. There's something else that can happen. Um, So let's say there's a gust of wind. So assume there is a gust of wind. So let's say the ship gets hit from the side by a sudden gust of wind. The, you expect the ship to heel slightly. And when the, that happens, the pend, pendulum basically swings a bit. Okay. Uh, pendulum being our suspended weight. So the weight W suspended moves laterally.
And when this happens, the question is, what is the lateral movement? combined CG. Okay, meaning what is G1, G2? And when we know, when we compute this G1, G2 shift, we can figure out what is the heel angle. Same thing we, we did in the vertical direction, KG, we, now we do CG, we do it in the lateral direction. So we have um, EG2 EG1, that's distance one times mass one. And remember, we already have accounted for the extra weight that was suspended. That's how we went from capital G0 to capital G1. So capital G1 is the combined mass. So it's W ship plus W suspended. All right, and then we say our pendulum swings from little G0 to little G1. So we have you took mass out from this position and put it over there. So it's minus E G zero plus E G one. And then on the bottom, we just have all the masses oh, um, and, and of course you can divide by g everywhere uh, divide by cent, um, acceleration due to gravity it'll just get cancelled out so So all the G's go away, that guy goes away. And when you rearrange this to figure out what G, G1, ah. G2, G1 is, it's basically C G two minus C G one. When you rearrange all of this, you end up getting um, W times G one G zero. Another thing we can do is we can relate uh, this lateral motion to the angle phi. So it's just trigonometry uh, we get. Mm, phi is tan inverse of 
g1, g0, divided by h worth. Or in radians is g1, g0 over h worth. Okay, so again, you see, we use the same exact concept of mass moving from one place to another. What's the combined center of gravity? Any questions? Okay, so um, now let me tell you about we keep talking about this G0, meaning the, the ship in the unloaded condition, the KG0 is something. Um, if you were designing a ship, you would have to determine this KG0, and you'd have to give it to uh, people who then decide how much weight to load on and where to load it on. So after you build your hull, Everything that is not, that cannot be moved uh, is, is basically, mm, all the machinery that's in place and cannot be moved is part of the hull. It's part, becomes part of KG0. So your first job is to figure out how to compute this KG0. And the way to do that is by something called inclining experiments. Oh, okay. Oh, inclining experiment. That's a question. Yeah. Could you simplify that uh, one equation, uh, W suspension times G1, G0 uh, above the phi, that one? What, can you say that once more? How did you get to that? How did you simplify that? Oh, uh, okay. So uh, you have CG0, CG2 here, you have CG1 here, okay? You take the denominator over there, subtract this term, and then you get this guy, okay? And whatever's left on the right side, all right, let, let me go one more step. So, um, uh, CG2 times W ship plus W suspended, that's the left-hand side. When I take this and multiply there, becomes what? CG1, W ship, plus W suspended, what else? Plus W suspended times CG1 minus CG0. Yes, going from here to here is good? Yeah. Okay, and then you see, you subtract these two terms. This is common, goes in the denominator. And that's what you have here. Okay, I see it now, thank you. All right, so inclining experiments. Uh, yeah, let me write out the note and it becomes obvious. So it's, these are used to Calculate the vertical CG location. Meaning kick um, keel to G0 location of a light ship. Okay. What is light ship? It means after the ship is launched,
but there is no uh, significant cargo load yet. And when you have uh, uh, a just launched ship, you basically, um, the experiments involve, um, the experiments involve, you place a known heavy mass onto the ship and move it from one side to the other. And you do it several times to cause the ship to heal. You measure this heel angle and this can be used to determine this kg zero we are after. So the experiments involve causing the ship to heal small angles. by moving known masses or weights um, across the deck. Great, so you move masses from one side of the deck to the other, and you measure how much your um, heel angle is. How would you measure this angle, the heel angle? You as an engineer, what would you do to measure this angle change? Use a uh, weighted pendulum. Yeah, you basically suspend a pendulum, a relatively small pendulum some, somewhere inside the hull. When the, when the hull is even keeled, the pendulum will be um, perfectly vertical. When you tilt it, the pendulum is still vertical with respect to the Earth's surface. Um, but you, you can measure what the tilt is with respect to the hull. Okay, so that, that's a very simple way of doing this. Okay, so let me draw and let's say this is the mass we have moved from here to there. When you move a mass laterally, that means you move the center of combined center of gravity also laterally. Let's say you end up uh, here. Uh, 
also let's say we have a pendulum suspended somewhere inside here. And that we use to measure the angle phi. All right, again, trigonometry will give us um, phi is tan inverse G0, G1 over T0, M. Remember, this is, this forms and sm small inclinations cause it to form a very small circular arc, which is um, more or less um, a flat line for small changes. So that divided by this, is the tangent. Um, Good question. Yep. I thought you said uh, like for small angles, or we could just say that it's G0, G1 over G0, G. Uh, um, we don't have to do tangent. Oh, yeah, you just wrote that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, for small angles, that's equivalent. Okay, so this phi angle, this is known. So this side is known because uh, we just measured it. From the pendulum dis deflection. And which tells us that G0, G1 is phi times G0, M. G0, M, we would, um, that, that we would know from before deflection, we could have computed our G0, M. Okay, so G0, M would have been KM minus KG zero. Okay. Oh, sorry. I mean, we don't know KG zero. That's the one we're trying to find. So G zero M is KM minus KG zero. All right, then, okay, G0 is a light ship, meaning before we added on um, wait, wait, let me think for a second. No, significant cargo, okay, let me write out a few more things. So, Find the G1 location. We, we basically want C, G1. Okay. And we say our this guy is located at G0. This is located at G1. Okay. 
So same thing we do as always, we've subtracted mass from this location, added it there. So if we do um, EG zero, delta zero. And little w is, of course, the container that we're moving. So this is little w. Okay, and let me just note that um, 46, uh, this zero is combined weight. is delta ship plus little w. What are the g's here? So, move this up a little bit. We had this expression here, G0, G1 equals something. We just figured out how to compute G0, G1. All right, so we'll plug that into that expression. When we plug everything in there, so this guy becomes W times G1, G0, divided by delta is phi times G0, M. Okay, what is G0, M? Um, oh, oh no, uh, let's leave that here. Okay, this gives us G0, M is W times G1, G0 over phi times delta. And this is what was missing from our uh, plug into AG0 equal KM minus. All right. And right now, this guy is unknown. Everything here is known. So this is unknown. We know this is equal to um, KB plus BM. This we know how to compute. This is I over NABLA. And this we can compute.
since you designed the hull, you will know what the hull shape uh, looks like. And you can always measure the draft, the current draft. Um, so uh, we know how to compute KB, both numerically and analytically, if it's a barge. You know how to compute BM. We just have to compute I and NABLA. Again, we know how to do this numerically. So now you can compute everything on the right-hand side. The unknown value was, where is the G0 located? That's, that's what we get, plugging everything in here. And that's what we wanted for our hull. Where is the center of gravity located? That, that center of gravity will not move uh, no matter what, whether you're floating in water or you're on land. So that value remains fixed. When you start loading and unloading, of course, that will shift up, down, and laterally. But the ship's kg0 is fixed. You determine it using this process. Any questions? Okay, so um, when you do this sort of an inclining experiment, you don't just move one mass across the deck. You move uh, several different masses, and this allows us to uh, plot them on a curve. So generally, inclining experiments. Involve several weights. And when you do this, you can uh, graph Let's say on one axis you have tan phi. And here you graph W times G0, G1. So W is your known weight that you are moving. G0, G1 is how much you're moving it laterally. And when you do this ex these experiments many times, you'll get a scatter of points. When you fit a straight line to this, the slope here is basically W times G0, G1 over tan phi. Okay, when you plot all of these data points, figure out the slope. This is a very quick way of giving us GM. So we know uh, to determine GM. Uh, G0M, okay. So we know G0M is we computed it above W times G Z G one delta times phi. All right. So again, remember G zero M. That's the metacentric height. For a light ship, once you determine this and you load on um, cargo, small amounts of cargo, you don't expect this metacentric height to change. So this is something else you can give to people who will operate the ship. Okay, any questions? All right, so now we'll talk about something uh, weird. Um, 
let's say you you tie together a bunch of um, logs and create a raft, all right? And you, um, let's say you throw it in a river and jump on with a bunch of friends. If somebody asks you to take along a huge container of filled with liquid, intuitively, what do you expect will happen? First of all, where will you place this huge container of liquid? And what will happen as, you, um, as you're going down the river? Okay, let's- It's gonna shift depending on like the heel or the toe or the trim. You're saying what? What will shift? Like the, the mass of the liquid. All right. So you're saying the mass of the liquid in the container will shift, depending on what did you say? The the trim or like the heel. Okay. So you're saying our raft is perfectly. Um, so let's say our raft is perfectly horizontal, nice and balanced. And we put a container, let's say, in the center of the raft. And as we go along down the river, we get a little bit of rolling motion. What will happen to the liquid level inside the container? You said something about shift, so. Um, the liquid level will stay level. All right, so the liquid level inside the container will stay horizontal with respect to the earth, okay? Um, but for you on the raft, you see the liquid level start to slosh, okay? And this sloshing can actually um, cause your raft to go unstable. One way to avoid this from happening is your container, if you fill it up completely, then you don't allow any of this sloshing motion. And uh, in, in that case, you don't get this, it's called a free surface effect because you don't have a free surface if you fill up the barrel completely. Uh, but if you don't fill it up all the way, there's this free, uh, the, the liquid inside the container is free to move when you roll or you pitch. Okay. And we'll figure out how, how much of an effect that has on um, stability of ships. If you think about it, um, what sort of liquids do ships usually carry? Oil, um, liquid chemicals. Oil, liquid fuel. chemicals. Uh, yeah, fuel, oil and people have to stay alive on the ship. Water. Fresh water, yes. So there's, there's many, many different types of liquids ships usually carry. And uh, that's another aspect where you have to be very careful designing them. All right, and we'll see how to take this effect into account. So the name of the effect is the uh, free surface effects. Yeah. And if you remember, I gave you in one of your homeworks to figure out what, um, when you have solid cargo that, uh, let's say, lose soil, um, the same problem arises when you heal, the soil all shifts to one side. So it sort of behaves like a liquid, not, yeah. So just in terms of talking about stability. All right, so a ship usually has tanks that are partially filled. We 
with various liquids. So it can be a fuel. When we um, oil cargo can be fresh water. ballast seawater chemical cargo okay any sort of liquid that you have on board can um, contribute to free surface effects When such a ship is inclined slowly, So the two main things that we care about when this situation arises is the first one is the CG shifts laterally since the liquid shifts. Okay, and the result of this shift is so this shift reduces the effective GM. Anytime you reduce your GM, you're reducing your stability. So this results in loss in stability. All right, and we'll be able to compute exactly how much the loss in GM is, depending on the shape of the container, the size of the container. And then um, how can we minimize these um, free surface effects? So if we draw this scenario, This is our container. And let's say initially our line was when the ship was even keeled, the line would have been this L0. But now the liquid stays horizontal. So the line is like this, L1. Remember this, we are talking about liquid inside the container. We're not talking about the draft of the hull. So the hull is the outer part. Then we have the container in here. And depending on whether this liquid inside the container is oil, water, glycerin, whatever, you'll have different density values for raw liquid. Okay. 
Okay. So when this shift happens, we know we've seen this before. Um, so let me just redraw this quickly. Mm. This is phi, we know the centroid will be located two over three y. And this is y. We did this when we were determining the BM equal I over nabla. And this we know is y times phi. volume of this triangular wedge. Integrating along the length of the shape, whatever we have here, half y times y times phi dx. Same as we did before, okay? And then, because this liquid has shifted, so we've subtracted mass from the left side and put it over there on the right side. Uh, we have a shift in the combined CG. So to compute that shift, we again do, we have the center line here. Let's say this used to be our original G. By definition, we are right above center of buoyancy. And let's, Let's say because of this rightward shift, our new G1 location is somewhere here. We don't know what yet, but it, it's, uh, let's say it's somewhere there. To find this shift, we know how to do this. So CG1 is CG0, no. We'll do a plus and minus, plus because additional weight on the right side, minus because weight subtracted from the left side. So plus two over three y delta wedge over g minus negative two over three y delta wedge. This goes away, the G's go away. All right, and we get CG1 minus CG0, four over three. And this we is this we know is G one G zero. All right. 
So um, uh, delta zero, we know it's the displacement of the whole ship. Delta wedge, that we need to compute. The wedge that has moved from the left side to the right side, what is the weight that has moved? And if we know, if we know the volume of this wedge, and if we know the liquid that we are carrying, we know the density, we just multiply the two, right? That gives us the mass. Rho times volume gives us the mass of this wedge. So delta wedge is equal to what? It's basically rho liquid times G times volume of the wedge. On the previous page, we had this is equal to zero to L y squared phi over two dx. What is the row I should put here? Density of what? Think about the problem we have. We're talking about multiple liquids. We're talking about a liquid inside the container and there's another liquid. Which one applies here? Probably seawater. Yeah, so remember that. Uh, don't confuse between raw liquid and raw seawater. The, for the original ship, uh, if we know the volume displacement of the ship, we care about raw seawater. But for the wedge within the container, we talk about raw liquid. This can be oil, so the weight of the wedge would depend on the oil density. All right, so uh, we take this and plug it, uh, we take both of these and plug them in the G1, G0 expression. So this gives us G1, G0 is uh, integral zero to L by cubed phi over two dx times rho liquid times G. Missing a phi, I know here. So, phi Two by three y cubed dx. This you will remember, this is i x.
Okay, important note here, so be careful. Is for liquid surface inside the container. Okay, this is not related to the Hulse water plane. Does that make sense? We don't, I tank is only for the container we're talking about, not the whole hull, not the water plane. Remember that. Very, very important. I've seen many people make this mistake over and over. Any question here in this expression? All the terms make sense, what, what each of them are. Okay. Um, fine, we have the G1, G0, how is this useful? So let's, let me pull up the page and ask you one thing. If you forget about this G1 location, weight of the hull acts at G0 downward. The buoyant force acts at center of buoyancy upward. What does what do these two do? In this tilted case, what do these two do? So if there was no weight shifting around on the ship, G0 would not change, it would stay here. In this case, what happens? This create a moment? Yeah, this creates a restoring moment, right? It creates a torque that'll restore the ship, all right? But now, when we have liquid sloshing on our boat, the G0 has shifted because of the shift in the liquid level, right? The liquid level moves, that causes a shift in the combined center of gravity to G1. What happens now? Where is the weight acting or the combined weight? Well, now it's closer to uh, the perpendicular distance is closer to the point of rotation. So it's not as strong of a restoring force. Yeah. So combined weight will act at this new combined center of gravity G1 down. The buoyant force is still the same. We didn't add any weight or subtract any weight. So still pointing upward. But now you see the moment arm is decreased. It's this perpendicular distance from X to the line. If there were no liquid sloshing around, it would have been G0 to the line. So the moment arm would have been larger. So this is what our sloshing liquid does. It re decreases the restoring moment acting on uh, the hull. What, how can you manage to capsize the hull? in this scenario? If the G1 moves to the right side of the, the BM line. Yeah, if you allow your liquid level to move too much, you will push this over and you will become unstable. So that can happen depending on the type of liquid you're carrying or the shape of the container. Okay, and we'll see how to hopefully eliminate the chances of that happening. So, recall that the restoring 
torque or couple So if we have no cargo motion, G0 cannot move. Um, and in this case, the restoring torque let's call this point A is G0 A times uh, weight so that would have been the case if there were no liquid on board. Um, okay, uh, we're out of time. So let me finish that next time. Any questions? Okay, see you next week.